Hey, how's it going? So this is the Survivor Side Story podcast. It's your boy Libra Got 90. I am your only host here. And today I just kind of want to talk about something interesting that I saw on Twitter, right? So I open up and I see, you know, if you follow Dead by Daylight, um, for those who still play it, by the way, for those last Survivor mains, right? Like, I mean, are there a lot of Survivor mains still out there? Are there a lot of Survivor mains still playing DBD every day? You know, trying to get to that. You know, iridescent one before that rank reset happens. You know, even though we know rank doesn't really mean a thing all that much, but you know, I get it. Um, some do it for the blood points. Some do it just to you know for bragging rights. You know, they're trying to, you know, argue with people trying to say, well, you know, I, I make it to area one every month, so I must be the best in the game, or I must be top five. And that's not even how this game really works as far as skill. It, it, this game only takes so much skill. By the way, I want people to like really understand that. Like, it only takes so much skill. As this game is heavily RNG, right, asymmetrical, you know, stuff like that. And the way that the devs, like, you know, just favorite killer is just so crazy to me because people act like it doesn't exist. So in this episode, and I'm not sure how long I'm going to go for pause, um, because it, today is my day off, and I, and I love it because it's a very beautiful rainy day, right? Um, I woke up having to argue with this girl on my Facebook, it was totally un- unrelated to like games or DVD, just like about like guy and girl relationships, relationship stuff. And she was just very disrespectful. So I had to like block her. I don't understand why people can't just, why people argue with emotion instead of like facts. At least, at least that's what I do in DVD is I don't try to debate things off of emotion. I go off facts. I don't argue to respond right or i don't debate to respond i'm not listening to responding and a lot of people do that in this community a lot of people do that a lot of places even in like your real life you know if you're in a relationship or you're in a friendship you know um there's people who just like it's like they they hear you but they're not listening and those those are two different things right see you can hear what someone said you can hear that someone's saying something but are you really listening attentively to actually understand what one is saying for example when I talk about this game being killer side if, and survivor side, you know, stuff like that, um, I, I, I pretty much, I can't, I can't say I hear unless someone, someone's actually making a video or doing like a podcast, but I can literally just say like what I've read online mostly is, you know, when I'm like, when I used to be in these Facebook groups and, you know, which I would never do again, by the way, I, I'm just tired of just like people being able to control how they do things in their group. You know, certain people are able to be disrespectful and they don't get banned. They don't get their stuff taken down. But, yeah, they get to do whatever. But the fair trade off is it is their group. Like it's the admins group, just like my channel. Like I don't mind people disagreeing with me just as long as we keep it respectful. And, and, I, and I try to hope that we can have friendly debates because at the end of the day, it's a game. Like I go to work. I'm a grown man, dude. I go to work and do what I got to do. Um, I do want to do this full time. But this game is really being difficult for me to want to play this full time because it's just so many things that they're doing in this episode though let me just kind of get into like the topics of today's episode and uh i'm not sure if you guys i'm sure you guys seen timu uh that is something that i may want to i may have a a potential sponsor with them pretty soon so hopefully that'll be good you know i want to do my reviews my due diligence you know before i team up with anyone and hopefully that our prices line right together and it should be great because I do want to be able to do something like this full time. And I love the idea of doing podcasts and stuff like that about a game that I'm passionate about. But um, but anyway, yeah, we'll touch on that a little bit later. But um, and I, I just want to say this. I do appreciate those who love these audio. Like I said, you could just be driving. You could be sleep. You could be doing whatever. As long as you can get value from this. Because I'm going to be honest with you, as I said before in previous podcast episodes, is that, you know, it gets old trying to make meta meta video builds as far as Survivor, uh, even though I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people who love them, but I've, I've done so many of them. And there's, <laughs> there's only so much you can do, right? And I'm not trying to get off on a tangent. I just want to make this one last point. There's only so much you can do to help a Survivor. You know, they have to have hours into the game. It took me 6,000 hours to, like, really be able to, like, fine-tune most of everything that I do. Uh, playing both sides, just understanding your opponent's you know, moves and stuff like that, you know, just understanding what they're going to do, try to mirror what they do a little bit. Um, and just, just the opposite way, if that makes sense. But I want to touch on the Q and A's that the devs done because they asked the question like, Hey, do you guys got any questions for us? And I feel like they, and I, I just want to do something real fast. I actually want to check 
because that, because I think people get confused too when I was talking I was debating the other day about Twitter on uh, not about Twitter on Twitter about like TCM versus DVD views on Twitch and mind you I'm not taking into account the whole thing I just want people to understand like like okay like right now DVD is at uh, 21 um 21.7k viewers and uh 15 15k viewers on uh TCM right so DVD got just a little bit more but if you go to it, I can still see Zubat on there. Um, I see uh, Berenin, if I, if I say that name right, if I say her name right, I apologize if I said it wrong. Um, I see Lily Pie, I see um, True Talent. I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, Hexy didn't even play it yet, right? And listen, I don't want it. Listen, I love DVD. I just don't love D. I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not liking DVD, but I love like what it has done for my community. But it's just like, Okay, so I just, I just kind of want to get into. I, I don't want to like prolong it too long. I've been ta- I've been rambling a little bit too much, and I'm only gonna read a few of these questions. Like they have it a lot on Reddit, uh, cause I'm looking on Twitter right now, and and I want. And here's the thing too. I, I'm not like the news source completely. I, I'm more of the. Uh, I just want to be clear. I'm more of just talking about how I feel about this stuff. But keep in mind, I do keep up with DBD, so I always recommend people to still go to the website and check them out. Just follow uh, if you have Twitter. If you don't download it on your phone or whatever or, or pull up a tab on your you know pc or whatever and then just follow dvd that way you'll have all the updates if you're a prime member on there you know you can also do that as well um i always tell people at the end of the day don't just take someone else's word for it always do your due diligence and check out stuff for yourself but they did a lot of uh reddit um q and a's and so i just want to kind of go over like maybe five of them or maybe six however mo- however Many of they are. I just want to kind of just read some questions real fast. And I kind of want to just pick them out. Uh, let me just see. Something that's kind of more. Also, too, uh, just to let y'all know, they also. Uh, so I'm going to go over these questions, but they also temporarily disable flashlights. The dramaturgy perk for, you know, that's uh, Nicolas Cage perk. Appraisal, which is, I think, is uh, Elodie's perk. Uh, and I want to say that one perk. What is it called? What is it called? What is it called? I literally just seen it, dude. Like I literally just seen it. Give me one second. It's so crazy to me how like I literally just seen a name, uh, residual manifesto, M- R- residual manifest perk. That's the Hattie's perk. Uh, flashlights, dramaturgy, appraisal, and residual manifest. Those are uh, the things that are right now temporarily disabled or soon because right now I'm a, I got the game on and. My Fang or Fung, that's her. That's how you really say her name. She has it in her hand right now as far as the flashlights. But it's just weird. I don't know what type of thing that they're doing with it. Reworking, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they made it worse. That's just what the dev seems to do. It's so weird to me. I, it just seems like they just go in the wrong direction. But anyway, on with these questions, though. Because my question to them, and I don't think they would answer I just said, how do you explain? I just want to get like my question before I go to theirs. Like, how do you explain that within the Alien chapter that just was released, like say uh, tomorrow will be like three weeks, I think that's been released, that we still have a 100% blood point bonus for Survivor. Now, a lot of times people will be like, well, you know, because usually it, but the, with the matchmaking blood point system, it's for those who just doesn't play. Like like, like the devs want you to play both sides so or they want to give an incentive. But if one side just seems terribly to play and broken, a lot of people, you got a lot of Survivor mains that are basically playing killer, or they're just not playing DVD, or you just got some like me who still, I don't know why, but still heavily play this game, and we know what the end result is, and it's so weird, because you know when you play the game, you feel like there must be a chance I'm going to survive, right? There has to be a chance, and it's literally almost the same thing, like literally, like I, I don't, it's so weird, because it's like, you know, like you don't want to have that negative mentality of thinking that you're not going to win or not have fun chases, but then there's the night. Then there's, uh, you know, Wesker, which I, I, don't, I don't mind playing against Wesker, but some things are just a little bit unfair as far as his, like, hits because his hitbox. Um, there's the Skull Merchant. And you got to ask yourself, like, why are people like this in real life? I don't know. Um, I don't know if the, I don't know how they look in real life. I don't know. I ain't trying to judge. But it's just like, yeah, some people, like, it's like as killer, you know the state of the game unless you're brand new and you don't know. But you got killers who know the state of the game and they hate survivors so much. They hate Survivor main so much that they do not care. It's like they not only kicking a man when they down, they stomping him, they stomping his teeth out, they kicking him in the stomach. They could care less. It's like they don't care. It's, it's like it's like the the fact that T 
TCM is a newer game and it's rivaling. And I'm not saying people aren't like DBD is just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So my question, I don't think they're going to answer that. But my question was, you know, how do you explain that, you know, you have a new chapter and we still have 100 percent blood point bone and people still aren't playing Survivor because Xenomorph is not fun to play against. And all these backseater gamers that want to say, oh, all you got to do is just do this. Like, dude, you're not going to tell somebody with six thousand dollars who main survivor really how to do. I'm not even trying to be egotistic there. It's just you got to understand some things. Some people say things and it's not, I'm not trying to disrespect them, but it's like it's like no duh. Right. Like you ever had somebody be like, like say something that's like really like obvious or serious, like or something simple. Like, gee, I didn't think of that. Like, looking ass. Like, duh. Like, okay. Like, we get it. We, she, but the, this killer can aim up, down, sideways like a cheat code. No matter what, it is. No matter what way you do it, this killer is gonna hit you. And then you got killers who know that they don't. Ha- they'll just zone you out and act like like they know you're afraid of the of that tail attack. So they'll just like basic attack you. It's a mind game, but it's all. But it's a mind game that you really about to get hit regardless. Like, you know, no matter what you do, you, you you can fake it, you can jump, I'm just going to stand there and hit you anyway. It's like going against Pyramid Head. You know, you see that window, right? You know, or, or you see the palette. You know you have these lock-in animations that's really hard to get away from. You can try to fake it. Look, guys, I'm not saying that there's nothing that you can't do against these killers, right? There's all type of ways you can do it. But you got to realize not every survivor is even built like that. They, they, they're they newer. You know, I can imagine just getting DBD today and after what they did last year in that 6.1.0 patch. And I keep bringing that patch up because I want people to really understand that that was the patch that effed this game up. Excuse me, give me one second. Because, you know, I got to get something to drink real fast. That, that low-key single-handedly was the patch that messed this game up. And the fact that you still got people that's believing, such as myself, that still try and play Dead by Daylight, knowing we about to lose, knowing that you about to have a survivor that's about to be the killer too. Like, knowing, though. Let me just get on with one of these questions. I'm sorry, dude. Like, dude, okay, some of these questions, I <sighs> I'm trying to get to them, but some of these questions, dude, I swear to God. And I, excuse my, I, I, I don't want to offend anybody when I say I swear to God. I do apologize to if I am, but it's just like, that's just how I talk at times. Uh, okay, this is a fun one. Made for this. Um, the question was, made for this uh, has become one of the most popular survivor perks in the game. Many players think this perk is too strong. Are you planning... Any nerfs or changes for MFT, which is made for this? This is the dev's response. Made for this is on the list for a bit of a touch-up soon. So you already know what that means. You know what that means, right? You know what that means. And it's just like, I just, I, I want to have a cup of coffee with the devs one day. And just like, because I don't mind like sitting down asking questions. Like, hey, um, you know, like what's going on? Like, why? Like, like are the kill rates... At, are, are the kill rates not at a thousand percent for killer right now? Like, I'm talking about like, are, like, <laughs> how do you even have fun playing killer? Do you have to be a bot? Like, I like okay. And I want you to mean, I mean, every word I say when I say you are a bot, because there are killer mains that knows that they are a bot. I'm talking about the tunneling ones. I thought, oh, I see you're a hyper stage. I gotta go. I, I have to prove a point. Oh, you're playing a certain survivor. I have to prove a point. I'm talking about you though, and your mama and your daddy. I'm talking about you. Right, even if you all the killer man that's watching, you all subscribe to me. I appreciate. I ain't gonna, I ain't going I can't come at you like that. I ain't, I ain't gonna do you like that. If you were a killer man and you watch me, I got a little bit biased. You know what I mean? Like you're a killer man. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't do that to you. I can't. I don't think it's right to just like you know what I mean. But like I can't, I can't do that. If you, if you gang, you gang. You know what I mean? I can't do that. But uh, I, I had to catch myself real fast. Uh, okay, here's another one. Uh, someone asked, can you say anything, and mind you, these are on, like, these are posted, like, you can go to Reddit, or you can, like, follow the link, um, I'm pretty sure there was, like, a thousand questions, these were actually posted, uh, the ones that they decided to post, I don't know, that was probably, like, the most important, uh, people are asking about, I will say, okay, if, if it's not a licensed character, it'd be nice if they could, like, switch up the cosmetics, like, okay, like, the one that they just made for Nia, right, 
And it's like no disrespect to like whoever making these cosmetics, but like it's like if, I mean like like these fit checks. I don't understand like. People like do people. I guess people wear this stuff in real life. Like, do they mix? Cause like some of these clothes be like garbage. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, figure things out. Like, I don't know. I ain't trying to be mean, but I mean, it is what it is, though. You know what I'm saying? So like, like I, I don't understand like why y'all be doing my my girl Nia like that. Like, I, it's weird. I mean, I know these are pixels, but like, come on, right? So anyway, um, can you? Here's the question: Can you say anything about if there will possibly be limited time? I mean, I'm sorry. Limit. Yeah, he said limited time game modes. Or different permanent game modes in the future, so I, I don't. I guess something else other than just chase, which I don't mind that the the same chase, right? I don't mind that. I mean, I put a lot of work into this game, and I like chases. I like being able. To, I don't like against every killer because then they eventually start to come out with just boring killers, dude. Like the crow lady. Like I have to. I mean, it can be fun to mind game, but you got to realize certain areas of the map you just caught, bro. Like you. If you play, okay, if you go on Ormans, right, let me just read their response. It says, well, I can't say much. We have been hard at work prototyping some new things for the future of DBD. We are aiming for 2024. We'll keep you updated with a, you know, exclamation mark. And, and I really hope that the devs are really, you know, this is their job. So I'm not trying to make fun of them and say what they're doing is easy and all that stuff. It's just that it's just really, this game has been really tough, right? And as far as chases, as I was saying earlier, I don't really care if there's a new game mode. I just think that if we are playing, let's say, if we're playing in Ormans, right, and I'm going against a Myers, okay, he could be tier one, tier three, he could be forever tier, he could be whatever, he can cry tears. He can't guard me, he's a bot, I'm sorry. That killer is, if you know how, if you know what you're doing, Myers is not a problem, okay? The only killers that become a problem in Chase a lot of the time are like the anti-loop killers. And I'm not, and I'm, I'm not talking about Doctor, he's trash too, you get it? Like, he's trash, like, he's... Every, <laughs> like, unless you're, like, a blight who, and I swear, I'm, like, okay, I'm getting off point. I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a still talk about them. Like, like, don't get it messed up. I'm still talk about them, though, right? I'm still get on them. Pause. But it's, like, going against the crow mommy, why am I calling her that? The artist. Dude, I'm beyond, like, see, see this community, bro. I'm not, like, listen. Crow mommy, I don't know why I did that. The artist, literally, if you are, like, okay, yeah, you can mind game if you have, like, connectable chain loops, right? Like, just don't do, like, the obvious loops. And I'm not trying to say that to people who are, like, brand new to the game because you don't understand it. Like, when you're new, you, you, you know, you're running, not looking behind you. You, you chuck down a pallet. But eventually you start to understand how to, like, mind game, how to greed a little bit more. But then, you know, that you're greedy. That's why it's called greeting. But at a certain point in time, you start to understand how to connect loops to belong and chase and mind game. You know, fake like you're about to go in shack so that way you break the line of vision and you ain't killer and you just go the other way. I do that all the time. You know what I mean? And then, like, they think I'm going to use Shaq because Shaq is a very safe place to loop. And then I just leave them and they're just lost. But I feel like if you are in at Ormond and you go against the artist and she set up her birds on one side, let's say you're already injured, it's really hard to even use Shaq at that point because you got to look at it like this. Shaq is always at the same spot in Ormond. I think certain maps, Shaq, well, I ain't going to say certain, ain't gonna, I don't say think. I know that certain maps, um, Shaq will be in a different area, different places sometimes, but at Ormix, it's always in the same spot. It's at, like, that right corner, like, way by, like, like you know what I mean, like, right corner of the map. So if you're already injured, right, and you didn't bring a bill, you didn't bring balanced land, and you didn't try to, you know, jump off the top uh, uh, floor, you know, but in main building to try to run, because I always do that. I always try to do that and run the Shaq. If you're already injured and you don't have balance landing or any or sprint burst and you're already injured, running the shack is pretty much useless. Because you're gonna run the shack and all she's gonna do is set up her birds. Her birds can go through walls, it can go through all of that. If the birds landed on you, she can see where you are, and then she can just hit you with the birds. And you really can't do too much because even if and even if you do it and if you wasn't going against a zoning killer like that or like the night and stuff like that, you still have that one part of the map where it's hard to connect another loop because once you use Shaq and you hope to break the pallet, hopefully you get to like another loop. Now they do got some areas like that. Like they got jungle gems, they got TNL walls and all that stuff. And they, and they even got some, you know, got loops or some good structure. But my point is, is that like maps like that and killers like that is already unfun. I don't mind chases in DBD 
But it's just I find it so annoying. And then you can't even flashlight the birds away. Like that was the thing that they used to be able to do in DBD. We used to be able to burn wraith. Okay, well, wraiths. Are, the the, the, the counter argument is so silly to me. Wraith is already a boring killer. So like, why would you? Or not boring, but like he's already a weak killer. Which I've seen some wraith play, and they play pretty well. Some people play pretty well. Do I think that at the highest level that they'll win? No, like. You can have pretty good chases, but, but the issue that I have with survivors also in this game, I just want to add is you can have a killer that can do pretty good in chases, but if you got survivors who are who stay doing generators, stay doing generators. I'm tired of messaging people like, hey, we gotta be we gotta do gens. I was doing gens. No, 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 no. We gotta stay on gens, dude. Like stay. Stay on gens, bro. Like you like how we go like how are we gonna leave the match? Like stay on gens, dude. Like if you're not in chase, stay on gens. See, that's why having these, you know, these 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 indicators of oh you're in chase or this person doesn't matter. You got people that just that they just don't do gens, bro. They say it's boring, but what's also boring is being bled out on the ground because the killer finally caught you and they want to BM you and hit you on hook because you just didn't stay on gens. Because I was in chase for like ten minutes. You feel me? So what I'm saying is, is give me one sec, because like my mouth. Hold on, you one sec. What I'm saying is, is that um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. By the way, y'all, almost a two thousand subscribers. I'm trying to get that sponsorship, you know, I can definitely do it. Uh, I can do it now. Like the thing about trying to get these sponsorships too. By the way, I just want to add is that you don't have to have a huge following to get sponsorships. And I've learned that a lot of sponsors will work with you if you're like really low as far as not like so much of views. Like they care about your views more than they care about like the following of it. Only because yeah, obviously you hope to get more following. What's also about your reach is also about your targeted audience, right? So that's what I'm working on. Um, I just got hit up. Obviously, you want to watch out for scammers and stuff like that. But hopefully, if I can get a sponsor for the channel, then I'm also making money. But also just, you know, not just from, like, the ad revenue. Because I don't – YouTube, unless you make like, – unless you have, like, a lot of subscribers, like, over a million views, a million subscribers, you're not going to really see a whole lot of money. And even then, you know what I mean? So the people who really make a lot of money are doing, like, a lot of sponsorship deals. But you also, like – I'm not going to promote old people medicine on my channel because it doesn't really apply to gamers and stuff like that, you know. So uh, especially like age group, like I don't think a lot of 70 year olds playing DBD. You know what I mean? I mean, they might be playing David or not David, um, Bill or something or William. <laughs> That's all I can think of. But um, here's another question, too. I want to go to. I'm just trying to see another question, by the way, to see what these people ask. Um no, I, I I'm trying to I, see some people they ask questions. I'm not saying they're not valid because there's is there are questions, but okay. Here's here's another fun. One. Here's another juicy one, right? It says, is it possible to say more about the situation of the fast vaults? So someone asked this the other day, because obviously, well, I'm gonna say obviously for those who do not know, uh, fast vaults now are pretty much the same speed as slow vaults. I ain't talking about you slow vaulting and not making the noise. I'm talking about when you when you don't have enough space and room to like, you know, at a certain angle, you can run uh, and try to get that fast vault. Well, now they made it where, like, and if you don't get a certain angle, you'll just do a, um, you still make a noise, but you'll just do like a slower vault. But now that's the same speed, even if you are angled to do a fast vault, if that makes sense. The devs responded, we are aware of the inconsistency surrounding the fast vault animation for survivors and anticipate addressing this in the upcoming PTB. So that's good. Hopefully uh, they do something. Uh, one thing I realized about killer mains in this game is like survivors cannot have anything. They just cannot. We cannot have anything. Dude, when I tell you this game is this first off, the game is called Dead by Deadlight. It's not called teabagging at the exit gates. You know, it ain't called, you know, um uh four man out. It, it's not called survivors in cosmetics with flashlights. It's called dead by What's the first word? Dead. It should be called slugged by daylight. It should be called camped by daylight. What else names? It should be called, I'm going to chase you all day because I'm a prestige 100, and I think that actually matters in the game, even though it doesn't equate to skill by daylight. It should be called all kinds of things by daylight. Like it should be called, this game is getting trashed by daylight because I don't understand why killer mains have to. Now listen, you can take whatever you want. This is not a hating and bashing killer podcast, even though it is called Survivor Side of Stories. But I, I'm not here. I see I, as as a Libra in the way that I am. 
You know, um, I look at a lot of things on both sides. I'm diplomatic in a lot of ways. So there's a lot of stuff, and I see a lot of fairness. If, if you're wrong, you're wrong. I don't care if we're friends. I don't care if you were my kid, if I had a kid, or if you're my mom. If you're wrong, you're wrong. It's not personal to you. It's just that whatever you're telling me, I'm just going to go off what you literally said and just try to process it the way I see it. You have a lot of killer mates. The issue that I have with killers is they want it's two things. They want games to be easy, right? And it's like they feel like they have to, and, 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 they, and they have to win like almost every single game. But you run into a team eventually that just knows what they're doing. Isn't that the exact? It's like when I used to play NBA 2K, I knew that there were teams that, you know, I, and it's just about if you're just a, a competitor, right? Because I knew that there were teams that we were just destroying because they just didn't know what they were doing. Like they were new, they probably barely played the game, probably some kid, right? I mean, even though these kids be really good though, you know what I mean? But I'm saying probably somebody who's just casual or you probably were just better than them. Who knows, right? Sometimes it's just really that. You're making the right plays. It's a little RNG sometimes, a little luck. Anything can happen. But it was always those teams that were really good that we went up against and we had a really good game. As a survivor, I know I'm not going to skip every single match. I don't plan to to leave every single match without getting hooked. Not all my chase is going to be all that long because I try to get people to understand this too. You know, the, the pressure of having a prestige 100 icon is that people assume that you can't ever go down in like less than 20 seconds. If I'm going against the ghost, if I don't know what killer it is in the match and it's a ghost face stalking me, and then they give, and y'all know how stupid these hit, these hitboxes are. Y'all know how they act. How many times have y'all got hit by something and y'all know that did not hit? I ain't talking about that shouldn't have hit. I'm talking about you know for a fact that did not hit. But the game rewarded them anyway. Okay? So when people will see that, they know that that's just how this game is. This game is not going to always be that. But if I had a good fun chase, most of, and because I know what I'm doing, most of the times I'm going to make the right place. That's just how it is. Even if you go to a map you don't really like, you just try to do the best that you can, right? Personally, I think that I mean, even though I like choosing maps that I like, I feel like no one should be able to bring maps at all. I feel like that's it should just be left up to the game. But it is what it is, you know, that you are still able to do that. I'm surprised there's still a lot of people to do that. But, yeah, you can still bring maps and imagine how that can look for the killer. I'm not saying that you don't have killers who are going against teams who are. But, see, here's the thing. You can go up against good teams, but – See, certain style of play just won't work on them. And I think I've said this before. Maybe I haven't, but certain things just doesn't work. Like, you have killers that will play against baby. Well, we got a lot of people who might, who I, who, um, forgot what it's called. It's when they, they purposely lose a lot of games. Maybe you guys can probably hit it in the comments, but there are people who are like, lose a lot of games. Uh, Smurfing. I think it's called Smurfs, right? Smurfing. Like, you lose a lot of games, uh, lower your MMR and all of this stuff just so you can. Down, I'm supposed to say you're at a level that's good, but you purposely do that just so you can play against easier competition. I think that's what uh, that is. And so what I try to get people to understand is that, like, killers, you can camp if you want, man. You can bring s'mores and all of that. I don't want none. Maybe one day. But if you do, I want you to please keep in mind that if you camp all day, and you expect every good team to just throw the game because you and you thinking, oh, I camped and I caught these survivors. And all. There's levels to this game, dude. There's levels to this game, bro. It's just what it is. There's, there's levels to swifts. There's levels to hours into the game. There's levels. It's a reason why at a certain level it's harder to win as Bubba. There's a lot of newer players that are like, oh, I hate Bubba. That's why I hate playing this game. I can't stand I used to hate him, too. And then I remember I used to be able to, like, loop him better. Then I, I, I remember one day, I remember when I first started playing this game, I used to, I, I counted the day, that one day when I when I escaped from Bubba. That was, that was like, my first time ever, like, ex, like ex, surviving against a Bubba. And I was like, wow. Come on, dude. He's a bot. Like, unless you are a blight, unless you are a nurse, Xenomorph with that stupid hit. Like, it's like, damn if you throw the pallet, damn if you don't. Damn if you take the window, damn if you don't. Uh, unless you are a uh, uh, pinhead because of the box, unless you are, like, any of these type of killers, dude, or, or like, these anti-loop killers, dude, I, I, I'm not, no one's worried about any other killer. And if you're brand new to the game, obviously you're going to be a little bit nervous against these killers. But I'm saying, if you think you're about to win games against good swifts, as Bubba, because you just camp in the basement all day, then you're going to eventually run into a team that's going to smack you in the mouth. They're going to give you a high five to the face. 
And then <laughs> this is what gets me. Then because that 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 tactic's not working, where I'm slugging and I'm camping everybody, and the fact that you just think literally that it takes skill to just stand in one spot, not pressuring gens, not kicking gens, not chasing other survivors, but you're standing in one spot, and you think you can do that against good a good survivors. You can do that against bad teams and newer players. They, they're gonna do that all day. Like you literally have. Survivors who just don't understand that. Like I try to, I remember having some conversations with, with somebody. And I was like, dude, you gotta just leave that person on to die, man. It is what it is. Like sometimes that's just how it is. It's like, well, I don't want to be a scumbag. Like, bro, relax, let you love. Like, go sit down now, right? Like, go sit down. Like, don't take that game that seriously. Well, I'm gonna try to be a scumbag. Like, bro, you're gonna see your friend in the lobby. You're gonna see them in the lobby in like two minutes. Don't throw the game because you don't like it's so it's so like you got to understand like how frustrating it is for survivors who know what they're doing is that we're playing with randos. I am at low MMR. I and, and I dislike when people think that because they are good at the game that they, that 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 they're not at low MMR. No, you likely if you solo queue, you are going to be at low MMR. Even the best competitor in teams, you know, Eternal uh, Nightlight is at low MMR and solo queue. Of course, he would be at high MMR with his friends and stuff like that. They know what they're doing. They're like the best team in Dead by Daylight. But you, but but even then, that takes comms. And it's so crazy to me how him and other people say this game is still. Again, the devs literally said we made this game to make it well. We wanted to buff Killer to make it where they perform better. What do you think that meant? Okay. At the end of the day, like, yes, you're gonna get a lot. Of, you're gonna get a lot of newer killers and killers who want to play, you know, poorly, and they just want to camp all day. Camping only makes sense, and I'm gonna read a little bit more questions soon. Camping only makes sense at the end of the game when all the gens are flying. Maybe you're bad in chase. Maybe you're just having a bad game in chase. Maybe you're not bad in chase. It's just like you know, playing against good survivors that just know what they're doing. You know, maybe you're at, maybe you're a bubba and you're at the game. You know, the uh, Gideon's meat plant. Maybe you're there, right? Maybe you want to go see what was going on over there. You know, they got pigs that you can, you know, that's hanging up, trying to eat there. You know what I'm saying? You got all kinds of stuff going on. Maybe you're there just to kick it. Maybe it's a bar there. I don't know. But you go against those survivors there, and we know even bad survivors can do okay or decent in that map because it's just, you know, the meta perk today is windows, right? And, and so it takes no skill to just be able to see where pallets are. Oh, let me just instantly chuck them. Let me just get him out the way. Anytime Bubba raises up his chainsaw, oh, I'm scared. Let me just throw the pallet. Any survivor can just do okay on that map. But when you play against somebody who is really good at the game, it's like I just feel sorry for them. And there's times I know it's why I feel like it's unfair sometimes even when I bring map offering because I know if I bring a good map offer, I don't care who you are, I'm, I'm, a dro I'm dropping you off. Like, what time is it? You're almost late for school, I'm dropping you off. Okay. And I got clips and videos to back it up. But I'm, see, I'm not one of them people where you just, I say stuff. Like, there's a lot of survivors in, on Twitter and Reddit. Everybody's a God survivor. But there's no content. There's no stream. There's none of that. All right? There's none of that. And I used to stream so people could see what was going on. But I wasn't as good a survivor as I am now. But you got to understand, with $6,000, yes, this is all I mostly play. But I would not understand or sort of master my side, right? That's just how it is. I'm not going to say I'm a good killer. No, I don't play killer. You know what I mean? But, yeah, so they plan to hopefully try to fix the uh, fast vault and try to revert that. I don't really know. But let's see. Um, no, somebody asked their thumbs. Okay, somebody asked this question. Does hitting thumbs up on a player do anything? Do you actively use the data at the moment? Again, I'm all for, like, people asking questions, man. I'm all for, like, people just like, it's just like, okay, who cares, though? Like, who cares, bro? The thumbs up, like, is, is that really the question? I mean, li listen. My boy or girl or whatever, them, they, I'm sorry, I don't want to go there. Um, like, is that really, like, DBD is at a worse, like, place. And there are very few survivors that give thumbs up to and very few killers that give thumbs up because they all play like a bot. So many times I get, I get you know, sabotaged by survivors and killers. Killers want to try to bleed me out and do all kinds of weird stuff. It's like, why would I even care? Like, that. that's not the question. But the answer to from the devs were, it is monitored, but there is presently no direct incidents. That said, all that is good data for us, and we encourage players to continue to show their appreciation this way. We are looking for more actionable items with this feature in the future. I'm sorry, that was just such a pointless question. But hey, man, do you. You know what I mean? I ain't trying to like take it there, but just do you. I just, I just think like 
I, I just want to know. If, I mean, listen, I didn't, I'm not checking, but I just want to know, like, how do you explain? One hundred still to this over a year, one hundred percent blood point bonus. How do you explain that from Survivor? Well, one guy responded to me the other day and was like, "Well, well, I, I guess uh, it's too bad. I guess uh, he was trying to be he was trying to be sarcastic. He was like, well, uh, I guess the devs just trying to make people play both sides. I guess they just trying to, but just like, dude, come on, dude. You know why people don't want to play Survivor, dude? Something's wrong with me. Is why I still play Survivor." Like, I know likely you're going to see meta killers. People just want to win the game, so they don't care. They're going to play boring killers. They're going to play Xenomorph. It's going to be really hard to get her out of her. You can use turrets all you want. You know, like, like, don't get me wrong. But, like, I mean, people are going to use all kind of perks and all type of stuff, and she's going to be very stealthy. You know what I mean? Uh, play thing is going to be used on her a lot because she's already, like, small to, for you to even, because she's crawling a lot. So it, it's, it's really going to be just like a meta. That's all they're doing. Um, and then here's a very interesting question. Give me one second. I just gotta get some of the drink. Cause I be I ain't gonna lie, my throat is really. Hold on. Um, they asked. Let me put my stuff right there. Uh, somebody asked, "What are you guys planning on doing with the skull merchant?" It's a very good question. We are aware that the skull merchant is very good at locking down generators in certain situations. We have a big rework plan for a feature release. I'm sorry, future release. There's too much detail to go in here, but we will be releasing more information soon. So very vague, right? Very, very response. But here's the thing. Again, I am not a dev, right? I'm not a dev. I just, the only thing that really irritates me, two things with the devs. Actually, three things. It, there's so many things that irritate me with the devs, by the way. And I don't plan to be a fog whisperer. So, And I don't think I'm saying anything that's really disrespectful. It's more of just me just giving my opinion is... Um, but one, that six point one point zero patch, like they know they can never go back to that. They can never revert. Killers is not. I I mean even even after like I just, I said earlier that you know dramaturgy is being is should be disabled like this is bugged and flashlights you know all this stuff. Which I'm not. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not even mad about flashlight. I hope that it's 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 disabled. Because it's too many times survivors like to just run behind me and chase me, and like I mean, I'm I'm Kyrie with it, you know what I'm saying? And I'm running for like ten thousand hours, and I'm seeing somebody behind me just to miss the flashlight, just to aim at the back of the head, right? But what I'm saying, as far as the devs go, the thing about the devs to me is that like outside of that, it's like okay, you 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 keep making these weird prime skins. I mean, not skins, prime uh, codes for blood point. Uh, like lately, I keep getting the four hundred thousand blood point. Now, listen, I appreciate anything I can get that's free. I'm not, you know, uh, picky. Well, I ain't cause I'm not picky, but like I, I appreciate like hey. But it's like I'm also paying like to be a member. Now I only got Prime mostly because well, one I use Amazon every now and then, but at least I feel good when I can use it for DBD's uh skins. These very rare exclu exclusive skins that I can use, but you're making them blood points. This is like the second time they did that. You're making them blood points again? All you gotta do is just play Survivor for like five hours or less, or well, way less. And because if you still have a hundred percent blood point, use your cakes, use all of that, you could just get it back. Like I don't understand the logic as to why you would continue to come out with that. And then it's just like it seems like they're not like I feel like they only started to do this because they see TCM sort of rival a little bit. Now again, am I saying people are playing TCM more than DVD? No. I'm sure there are if you look on Steam, I'm sure if you look on console, as I said this before, you can likely still see all of these things going on. That people are still playing DVD. But they're also you gotta think about which side are they playing? Are a lot of survivors playing DVD or are there a lot of killers playing DVD? Because I got the game on right now. And I'm literally looking at my Fung, which I hate saying her name is Fang. I'm not saying Fung. Well, ugh. I'm gonna say Fung. I want people getting, you know, just, you know, think it's a pixel character. You know, she's not real. You know, I can't hit her up in the DMs, but, um, you know, uh, I think people would get upset if I did that. So I'm gonna say Fung. You know, just, you know, um, but yeah, that's like my whole thing is that like, to me, they just do stuff that's just like, like you you know a lot of people aren't playing Survivor. I'm looking at the screen right now. It shows 100% matchmaking for Survivor to play. That means a lot of people aren't playing Survivor. There are a lot of Survivor mains playing Killer or they're playing something else. And it's crazy. Um, 
I just want to touch on this too, and I, I hate naming names, but I mean, we all watch DVD for a lot. We all know who these people are. Is that like you know Aaron Dukes, the guy who I've seen grow up and come in come up in this community, uh, and you know he done like a lot of content about you know controversy stuff with streamers and stuff and what they how toxic they were and stuff like that. Very entertaining to watch. He done a lot of one v ones. Cool dude. But but now I think his last stream was just like yesterday of streaming DVD, and he said he just didn't want to play this game anymore. You know, just like Dowsy when he quit when the Skull Merchant came about. Okay, you already had the night. Okay, and then you have the Skull Merchant, who pretty much made the game just even more boring because again, people, I'm I'm gonna say this forever. People care more about winning than having fun. This is why you see a lot of meta builds for Killer and Survivor. This is why you will see made for this. For Survivor, you will see Windows. You will, you'll see people play, you know, use Boil Over and use other stuff. And usually that's people playing with friends. But a lot of times people just want to just use the best optimal thing. And that's just what it is. Same thing with Killer. People are going to use Lethal Pursuer. You know, people talk about, in, you know, when they were doing this stuff, you know, uh, in the beginning, the overhaul nerf and buff to from, from killer to survivor and all this stuff that oh well you know we're gonna nerf certain perks like dead heart so we won't keep seeing them used because they're very popular but i mean lethal is very popular i mean a killer literally can just use their natural mechanics and that and they already see generators right they already like they see scratch marks they see explosion noise notifications when somebody fastball into a locker or into a, or towards a window Right, like you see all of these things, but no, you need lethal pursuer, you need lethal, okay, you know barbecue and you know what I'm saying like I'm talking about like all of this stuff that people were just using a whole lot. And I think people stopped using barbecue a lot too because I think it used to give you blood points or stuff like that. It, it used to, I think, Wigliff, if I was if I'm not mistaken, did the same thing. I know or approved diet or something like they changed so much, dude. Like back to back, it's just crazy. But to make a long story short, and I'm sorry for getting off on this, but yeah, the Skull Merchant is lit. Like, people who play the Skull Merchant, I promise you, dude, listen. And I'm not even trying to, like, be on no type of, like, bad energy and, like, outside of the game. Okay? But in the game of Dead by Daylight, or Dead by Midnight, you know, Dead by Fall, whatever you want to call it, I wish you no success. Because you know why you play the Skull You got... You have people who know why they do what they do. It's so frustrating, dude. Like you, you know why they do it. You see, survivors. All we have are just our perks, right? And items. That's it. Every skin is just pretty much the same. Sure, you can argue that. Oh, if you use like Nia is my main, right? But I mean, I like to use smaller characters, but I can still play with Jeff and still, you know, what I'm saying, give somebody that work. You know what I mean? I still can get somebody that work with Big Jeffy Boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I will still get somebody, you know what I'm saying, that, that hunk of a male. I will still get somebody that work. I'll clock you in. You feel me? I'll still get somebody that. But I, and even if you don't act, I'll give it to you. I'm not like that. But my point is, what I'm saying is, is that you got people who, like, killers are their power. Survivors are their perks. Killers are their power. You see? And so, you killers, like, survive, like you play the night. You know you're not going to go on a long chase for the night. You know you ain't trying to really mind game. You're not about that. You know, because you know he's too tall and slow. It, it doesn't even make sense. Like, you you know it's somebody who knows what they're doing. But see, this is what the devs and other people got to understand. Not every survivor knows how to loop well enough that you won't even have to use your power. Just like everybody knows how to loop a bubble. And when they see a bubble, they, they instantly drop a pallet. They don't understand that. They don't understand that because they see him and he just seems unfair. And he's very hard to get away from camping. But... The, he's not a problem at all in Chase at a certain level. Same thing with a Myers. Same thing with uh, Ghostface gets on my nerve because there's just certain stocks that gets on my nerve. Plus, he can hide his wrist. It's so annoying. Um, Wesker, he's not bad in Chase. It's just in certain zones, he's going to hit you. When he first came out, he, was, he wasn't he was all that bad in Chase. And, but I knew that they were going to buff him. And then some people didn't think that was going to happen. I knew. I was like, yeah, he, his hitbox is going to be buffed. When Trickster came out, he was trash. They buffed his blades. To where now you get, like, if he hits you enough, it's faster now. You will get injured faster. But I want people to understand that Killers was still averaging a 50. There was only two Killers at the time I was looking at it last year. With the exception, like, there was only two Killers. 
that was the exception to the rule of averaging uh, uh, a 2K. And that was Nurse and Trickster. And mind you, Nurse and Trickster was around like 49 point something. So they were close to 50%. They were close. So overall, killers weren't like really losing. They were like literally a play away from like understanding what they needed to do. They were like literally a play away. But no, they just decided to just you know give them that. And and, and I and I, I'm not a fan of. I'm really not a, a a fan of like you know people just winning something or getting something just for like oh well I don't know what I'm doing but I'm just gonna do it anyway. I'm just really not a fan of that. I think there's some more questions too. By the way. I think there's more questions. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Somebody's asking about, like, the mores. Like, again, some people are asking questions about stuff that I really don't really care. But I just feel like this, too. Maybe it is, does not need to be stopped. I mean, it does not need to be changed at all. We do not need to change it. It's so frustrating that people feel like they need to do that. It, that does not need to be changed at all. Maybe it is, needs to stay. Um, maybe it is, and then Bloodlust. You know, you, you have these two things together, and at the end of the day, Bloodlust will still win. Now, am I saying that, like, now, <laughs> again, it's like, hey, we're only going to pay attention to, like, the good survivors. We're only going to pay attention to get, against survivors that know what they're doing in Chase. There there are so many survivors that can run the exact same perks that I have, and they still would lose. It just does not matter. Like, y'all have to believe me and understand what I'm telling y'all that. You have these survivors that will still lose the game. So you cannot literally just be like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to just... Uh, you know, nerf certain things and just make it. And I'm still wondering, man, before I pretty much end soon. And also follow me on Twitter, by the way, too. Um, there's just Libra God 90. Uh, got the blue check mark. And listen, since I've had that, um, I loved every bit of that. I, mean, I get so many engagements and, you know, stuff like that. Um, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's it just my whole thing, too. It's just like, again, you know, I, I was waiting for them to do um, the the base kit unbreakable. Where is that at? I mean, if we're doing all of these changes, right? Why can't like listen? I will DC. I don't care if y'all ban me for life. I will DC if you slug me on the ground forever, just to prove. A, I don't understand how demoralizing it is, and feel, or people do. I just feel like the devs don't care, or they just don't know. Well, I just, which I think they, I likely know that they know. They just don't care. The fact that somebody can just bleed you out and just sit there and just stare at you and give no purrs and all of this stuff all day. Why do y'all allow that in the game? Y'all got time to nerf, so don't know. So, uh, so okay. Because, see, I'm the type of manager or a supervisor if I ever was one. Like, I won't have to talk to people like they stupid, but I would have to ask. I would have to sit down and be like, hey, so, like, what's going on with behavior? Oh, yeah, we're just going to... You know, nerf made for this. Okay, but what about people complaining about like you know, um, you know, uh, people bleeding on the ground? Like, 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 why can't we change that? And I would just love to hear their response, right? And if it's a silly response, I might have to write somebody up because I'm just gonna be like, dude, like you're pissing me off. Excuse my language. That should be base kit. Listen, y'all already nerfed so. Listen, I want to go down the list of a lot of stuff that we all know and love got nerfed. All right before I end up ending soon. Okay, so decisive strike got nerfed to where it no longer is work at the end game. If that perk alone that got nerfed does not show you that the devs' intentions want killer to win more and have a more fun experience, I don't know what to say. You're just delusional. Like seriously, like I I don't know. The mere fact that, okay, and I understand, okay, they nerfed a bit of nowhere. They make it where you can see it now. So some will argue that's a bit of a, a nerf because usually you used to do totems and all of that stuff um, at the very end. Or if you just do all five of them, whatever. And, and that's a very good point. I've, I, I've even fought for that. Like, hey, I'm not a killer man, but I just think that, hey, if people just did totems, just do it. Like, it's just that simple. Like, Nike style. Just do it. Just do totems. We don't need to see it. But, hey, guess what? It still doesn't stop people from using it. Uh, it still doesn't stop killers. Like, like literally, I think I had a game where um, I got caught with nowhere, and then everybody trying to go back and be very altruistic, man. Like, I tend to be very altruistic out here, dude. It's like, just leave the game, dude. Like, y'all don't. Oh, my God. I don't want to get into it, man. Dude, it's almost already an hour, too. That's crazy. Um... 
But yeah, like they they do a lot of that. So decisive strike got nerfed to where it doesn't work in game, and not only that, you get less distance. So a lot of people don't talk about that either. Like when you, I think it used to be like five seconds stun. I think it's like three seconds or so. So like they purposely made it where a killer can sort of react and catch you. Um, off the record, that um doesn't work in game. So you know it's a it's a perk where uh, I think it's arenas right where if you you get unhooked uh, for like 80 seconds, assuming that you have it on the third tier, is able to um, uh, not make any sounds. Uh, I don't know if your aura is red. Uh, I can actually, let me see, because I might, I might even finna, I might even finna try to guess. See, I got the game up right now, so I have to just figure why not just look at it, you know what I mean? And this is live, well, it's not like, it's not live, but like it's a, it's a podcast thing. So like, I don't care if I'm making mistakes or I'm saying whatever. Okay, let's go to Zarina. I think does it hide your does it hide your the aura will not okay, yep. So aura will not be shown to killer. Um you don't make no sounds, so grunts of pain. Uh all of that sound is reduced by one hundred percent. And you also gain the uh endurance effect in case. And that's a very meta perk. That's a very good perk. A lot of killers love tunneling. Right? So but they cut that down to where it doesn't work in game. Why do you think that is? And I know, like, you got to realize, yeah, but a lot of good survivors, they knew how to pair it with certain stuff. Like, like, like killers don't pair things. Let me tell you what I've seen, like, like, Deadman Switch, dude, like, every single, I think, I think Pain Res and Deadman Switch, wasn't that a thing before, too? Somebody please correct me, where, like, somebody got, like, hooked on a, on a, on a scourge, and then, like, or a scourge, however you say that. And I think like when you like like when it made that explosion, they like they like cause because you got off of it, dead man like blocks it and stuff. Like wasn't that not like a thing that Killer did? The issue I have with Killer in his game is that they cannot seem or they choose not to. I ain't gonna say you can't. You choose not to acknowledge they get. Hey, guess what? Sometimes I'm just bad. Sometimes I just have a bad game. Why is it always a swift that you lose to? Why can't it just be that you just lost the game? Why can't? Why do you have to go for a four K and bleed out everybody? I could be, I could be having to go to work. That this time I have the DC just because. I'm not gonna tell my supervisor, oh man, I couldn't make it to work because I had a pinhead that just decided to try to keep me in the game all day and think that's gonna fly. I mean, could it fly? Sure. I mean, if I think if they played day by day, like, it would totally make sense. I mean, it wouldn't be a problem. But most people ain't gonna go for that. Not even the supervisor I'm talking about. Like that's what I mean. Like they know what they are doing. They know what they're doing, but all you hear is cry more. Well, who's crying more when the devs are on you all side to nerf Survivor and kill it? Well, yeah. But y'all had to be the first one to cry. Like, I don't, I don't understand the logic in that. Like, y'all had to have been the first one to cry. It makes no sense. You know what I mean? Like, literally, it makes no sense. You have to be the one that's making this game this way and complaining about people leaving. Because I remember that. I remember before, like, when they did the... This is before the 6.1.0 patch when they when they actually had, you know, skill-based matchmaking for real. Like, where they were closer to putting people around, like, your level. And there was a lot of killers that did not like going against constantly sweaty teams. But if you are sweaty, see, here's the thing. This is what I mean when I say, see, you can't just camp all day with Trapper, dude. You can't just camp all day with a Bubba, dude. Like, at a certain level, you got to get them nurses. You got to get them blights. I call Blight the dead heart of all killers. Because he's the only killer I know that can literally outplay. And this man will bounce around, pause. He will bounce around everything, own everything, pause. Just to finally hit you after 10 minutes. And I'm talking about he be almost done with his rushes and still somehow connect and hit. And people know why they play these killers, dude. They know why they do it. I don't want to hear because I guarantee if these killers took a heavy nerf, y'all would not be playing them. So, like, why are we, like, doing this thing? I don't understand why people have to, like, do that, dude. I'm a survivor main, and I get on survivors all the time. Like, hey, we throw the game. You know, I have a series where I, I, I'm trying to upload more. I was just working on that video until I just saw this update today about them trying to uh, basically kill switch these items, like, you know, flashlights. and so Which I'm not, I'm not a big fan, fan of flashlights. I can use flashlights because I'm not going to leave a generator and follow somebody all day to try to get that save. Like a lot of yous do it. You know, I do my gens, I do what I can, and if I'm in chase, I'll use it, or if I'm just happen to be in the area, sure, but I'm not, like, running around all day not being productive. And then just to only miss the flashlight. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I just don't understand the logic of 
how a lot of stuff just happens in this game and stuff is always seems to be changing, but we're just not accountable. I get on survivors all the time. We could have won this game. We could have did our thing, but no, somehow we just threw the game. I, it's called DVD replays. If you ever want to check it out, I think I uploaded one video this year with that though. Uh, as I've been trying to do like meta videos, just to try to get views and trying to keep up with shorts and all of these things. But sometimes you're just not inspired. DVD has been a game that I have barely been inspired. This is why like I know that, and mind you, I was at the bar the other day and I was talking to someone and maybe he was having a bad time or whatever. I'm going to tell you this too before I end it. And I know I keep saying end it, but maybe in five minutes I can, I can do this real quick. I don't care who you are. Stand on your ish. I don't care who you are. Do not allow anybody, any man, any woman, look at what you're doing or, or the grind or the or, or the early stage and say it's not worth it. Or because cause a lot of times they're projecting their own lives and saying that, oh, it's not worth it or it's not this or it's not that or you're, this could have been higher or it seems like you're not getting... Like, at the end of the day, I know what I'm... Like I said, one, I don't do this full time. I know that I have to work and I have to have a place to live because then I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to make this content. And I came from nothing. I'm from around the way. You feel me? And I just want people to understand, like, you know, nothing comes easy in life. Like, today, I just got me a possible sponsorship deal. I'm not going to, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's, uh, hopefully, it's a legit thing and it's something. But even then, that's not going to be, like, life-changing money. You know what I mean? Like, the deals that we're hopefully to agree on, that's not going to be life-changing money, at least not right off the bat. But it's like, you have to be able to see things through. It's literally that simple. Do not allow somebody who don't even know or care. You're never going to see that person. Who cares? It's people talking trash. You have to get out. and It's why I've been at my job almost nine months. I haven't called in once. And when I was at Panera Bread, I was there two years during the pandemic at that, when it started on that. And I was there two years and I never missed a day. It's because I have a channel. And that's when I was staying with family. So I was only paying like 40 bucks for rent. Okay, like I have a channel to run. I had streams I was doing. The thing that motivates me and keep me going are my subscribers. Because outside of this, I have nothing. The fact that I literally have people telling me that they appreciate when I upload. Like, I don't even know these people in real life. I don't even know you guys in real life. You feel me? So for me to be able to impact... Uh, there were some people who I've even met who say, hey, uh, what's your YouTube channel name? Oh, my son watches you. Her. Like, that's crazy to me. And I'm not even, like, big. Pause. Like, I'm not even, like, out there. You know, and it's just, like, to allow somebody who is no disrespect to this person or them who probably are upset with their own lives and you have people who project. You know, you have people who say things and, and, and it's like what you cannot ever allow. Because I feel like if you allow them to do that, then you probably didn't believe in yourself in the first place. You know, there are people leaving the Dead by Daylight community and they're having to restart over because Dead by Daylight became that much unfun for them that they just could not take it anymore. They said, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this making this game unfun. I'm tired of people sensing me on stream and I'm not having a good time. I'm not having fun. I'm, I'm miserable. I'm depressed because this is my job. This is, people only watch me because I'm playing this and then you end up trying something else because it's like I gotta get out I gotta do something else that's how it was with NBA 2K for me like I, I played NBA 2K for a while and that's exactly how it was so I just want people to understand that at the end of the day man you have to grind you have to get up and hustle and do everything you need to do to be better I know my numbers aren't hitting like that, and I know this is a newer thing where I'm doing just the audio. I think it's like my third one or second one I'm doing with the audio, and I didn't think I can go in a whole. I didn't, I didn't think I can go another hour. Pause. <laughs> oh man, dude, that's that's some funny stuff, man. But yeah, all I can tell you, man, um, believe in yourself, keep grinding. I'm gonna try to go ahead and get these this. Um, out by tomorrow or tonight i mean if people want to watch it it's fine I just, i'm just excited that people watch it and stuff like that and i try to listen to it when i got time i'm off for two days so uh, i'm trying to better myself better my health and everything like that and that's all i can say man but hey if you're new to the channel please like share subscribe 
please uh, contribute to the comment section with respect. And if you disagree with me or not, that's fine. Um, I like to have a little back and forth, you know. Um, and, yeah, that's all it is, man. Uh, I'm trying to keep updated and just keep on rocking and pushing. But this is your boy, Libra Guy 90 your host of the Survivor Side Story podcast. Have a blessed day out here. Stay safe. And peace.